Hello. I hope all of you are having a good day. Here we are on a Friday again for a live English lesson. I hope that uh everything works well technologically. This lesson is of course going to be about computers and we'll get started in about uh eighteen seconds or so. Let me uh put my earbuds down and get ready to start. Uh, about eight seconds. Five, four, three. Should I count down two, one? Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about computers. This is part two. I did a part one. I did a lesson on computers I think last spring. So, if you do wanna watch that first uh, or if you wanna watch that later, that's probably good review as well. But in this English lesson about computers, I went through some uh I did a little bit of research and I tried to find as many verbs as possible that we use when talking about the computer. There's a few nouns thrown in as well. It isn't a complete Uh, It isn't a perfect list of English verbs that we use when talking about computers but I certainly uh found a lot of them and I was surprised because I thought we only had one but we actually have many many verbs many English verbs we use when talking about computers. So, thank you so much for being here and we'll get started in just a moment on this English lesson about computers. Before we totally get started though, I do wanna say hi to Dave and Todd here to moderate the chat for us. I do want to remind you that if you do want to ask a question, there is a link that you can use. If you click that link, it takes you to a form and your question gets put on a list for me. Uh and also, please remember on Fridays, I only answer questions that are on topic. So, if you ask a question about something else, I will skip it. I'm not trying to be mean but I like it when the lesson is neat and tidy and we stay on topic. So, thanks to Rod, the English teacher for being here. Easy English, uh Libya, Lolly Lolly, Judith is here as well. Of course, as I mentioned, Dave and Todd, Lemon Cute is here. I know Norma is here. Judith, I mentioned already. I'm saying names twice. I just go by what's in the chat. I know Eugene is here. Wanda is here as well and so many others of you here ready to learn a little bit of English or maybe it's just going to be a bit of review but let's get started. So, the general term we use when talking about the computer is that you use a computer. Maybe you're doing some research and you're going to use your computer. Maybe you have to type something up. You might use your computer. Maybe you just want to check your email. So, you might find your computer and use your computer to check your email. Um if you share a computer, you might have questions like this in your house. Are you using the computer tonight? Because I need to use the computer as well. So, if you have that situation, maybe you're talking about uh who gets to use the computer. So, this is the general term, the general verb we would use when talking about computers. We would say that you use them. The English verb to use is very, very useful. (laughs) I just used the verb to talk about. Sorry, I yes. Anyways, it's a useful verb. Use is a useful verb. Now, when we talk about kids, there's a couple different ways we talk about computers. Sometimes kids play on the computer. So, if you have children or nephews or nieces or maybe you run into kids because you're a teacher, they might say things like, can I play on the computer this afternoon? Um my kids always say, what time can I play on the computer? Um we've set rules in our house that our kids can only play on the computer at certain times of the day. Um and we sometimes call it computer time. Although, they aren't always just on the computer. Sometimes, they use their phones uh, or they're playing on a video game console as well. Um we also use the word I've just thought of this. We also say go on. Sometimes, we say we let our kids go on the computer for a couple of hours each day or our kids might say, can I go on the computer tonight? I need to use it for school. So, use and play on and to go on the computer. All general terms for using the computer. Um sometimes the computer will crash. When the computer crashes, it is not a very, very nice thing. You could even see in this slide They've put like the emoji for a sad face and it says your PC ran into a problem and needs to restart. That is never a nice thing to have. 
especially when you're doing something important. So, you might end up saying to your boss, I didn't get the work done last night because my computer crashed or you might say to uh, someone, I was working on my computer yesterday and it was so frustrating because it kept crashing. So, when a computer crashes, I think we all know what this means. It stops what it's doing and it gives you an error message on the screen. Sometimes computers freeze or you would say your computer is frozen. So, you could also say to your boss, I couldn't get my work done last night because my computer kept freezing or you could call tech support and say, I'm having trouble. My computer is frozen. So, even though freeze and frozen is usually used to refer to when water, when the temperature goes below zero, we also use it to talk about a computer that won't do anything. If you hit keys on the keyboard, nothing happens. If you click your mouse, nothing happens. You would then say, my computer has frozen or my computer is frozen. And then you'll need to do this. You'll need to reboot your computer. When your computer is on and you tell your computer to turn off and turn back on again right away, that is called rebooting. We also sometimes call it restarting. A lot of times when my computer starts acting strange, if I get error messages, if my computer crashes, I most often reboot my computer. I usually decide that, you know, now is a good time to turn my computer off and turn it back on again right away and that process is called rebooting. Um when you have to reboot your computer um several times every day, it might mean that there's something really wrong with your computer. Um I usually only reboot my computer every once in a while. It's not a very common thing. You might have something called a virus and I'm going to talk about uh, malware in a bit. Um I should have put these slides in a different order but that's okay. A virus is something that um infects your computer. The same way a virus infects the human body, there are viruses that infect computers. Um so, a virus is a piece of software that someone has written and its goal is to get onto your computer and then to spread itself to other computers. A virus is never a nice thing to have on your computer. So, often you will install antivirus software. So, antivirus software is a different piece of software which tries to um get rid of uh viruses on your computer. So, let me um go to the malware slide though. Malware is the general term for any piece of software that was written to do bad things to your computer. Um viruses are malware. Um spyware would be malware. Spyware is software that um spies on you. Maybe it checks what your keystrokes are or it takes information from your computer um or monitors what you're doing. So, malware is not a nice thing to have on your computer and when you have a virus or you have uh some sort of malware on your computer, it can cause your computer to freeze or crash. Sometimes that is the reason that that happens. I think we're all familiar with this word spam. Um when you have an email address, you get emails from people who you want to get emails from but you also get a lot of email uh emails from people who you don't know and who try to sell you things. I get a lot of spam in my inbox. Um I get a lot of spam email. Email that I don't want uh especially around this time of year as Christmas approaches. I seem to be getting more and more spam uh in my inbox. A lot more spam email as people uh try to convince me that I should buy things. I just delete spam. I also have a spam filter which puts um email that the computer knows is spam. It automatically puts it into a separate folder for me. That's very handy to have a spam filter. We also have all run into this. It's called a captcha. So, a captcha is when you're signing up for something on a website or you're trying to log in somewhere and the website wants you to prove that you are a human. The website wants you to prove that you're not a piece of software and so, there are a lot of different varieties of captcha. A captcha again is kind of like a little test that only a human being can pass. So, this one you have to check off, I am not a robot. 
you've probably seen the captcha where you have to click on all the photos where there's a boat or it will say click on all the photos where there is a bus. That is another form of captcha as well. Just a way to uh, make sure that the person using the website is actually a person and not some kind of software. We don't use this term as much but we have something called the cloud. A lot of things are saved in the cloud. All of my YouTube videos are in the cloud. When you use something like Google Drive, so Google Docs or Google Sheets, all of that information is stored somewhere on the internet on a computer. It's not stored on the computer in front of you. So, you can have things stored locally but you can also have information stored on the cloud. Maybe you've used Google Drive. Maybe you've used Dropbox. There are a number of different ways that you can put things onto the internet and we would say that it is then stored in the cloud. Hey, let's jump over and do some questions for a sec. I am gonna do an audio check as I do that. Sounds good. Let me get to the questions and see. Crypto Pal has the first question. Let me have a sip of water here. What are programming languages and their uses? Thanks. In order to have software, someone needs to create the software. Software is um a list of instructions that tells the computer what to do. We also say that it is a computer program. When you write a computer program, you write in a certain programming language. Maybe you're writing in Python. Maybe you're writing in PHP. Maybe you're writing in C++. There are a number of different programming languages and it's just different ways to give the computer instructions so it does what you want it to do. Uh let's see here. Um Renata, hi Bob. How much do computers cost in Canada? By the way, you are not hated sir by anyone. You are loved by all of us. I just thought you should know that. Be well. Thank you. That's uh Renata responding to a funny I thought was a funny comment last last Saturday. Thanks Renata. Um how much do computers cost? So, I'm going to talk in Canadian dollars. You can buy a computer for $500. You can buy a computer for $5,000. Um the average price of a computer is probably about $1,000 maybe $1,500. So, $1,000 would get you a relatively good computer. $1,500 would get you a much better one. If you like to play games though on your computer, you'll probably spend $2,000 on a computer so that you have a really good computer for playing games. Uh let's see here. (laughs) The debate continues. Ruslan, hello, the best teacher, Bob. How are you doing, sir? And then Intel versus AMD. Which one of them would you choose? Have a nice weekend. Both of my computers, um I have a laptop and a desktop, have Intel CPUs. They are Intel-based computers. I have in the past had AMD based computers. I've had a number of computers in my life and I think it's been about two thirds Intel and one third AMD. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, um you can have a different you can have a different chip in your computer, a different CPU, central processing unit. Uh you can buy them from either Intel or AMD. Let's see here. Fox. Hi, Bob. Maintain, support or keep. I notice that talking about computers, they often use maintain. So, we have a company at school that provides tech support and they maintain our computer systems. So, that means they make sure everything's working all the time. When you hire someone to maintain your computer systems, they check for problems. They respond when there's errors. They provide support. So, I've kind of used both words. Um we wouldn't use keep. We could say though that they keep the computers running, okay? So, they provide technical support. They provide computer maintenance or they maintain our computer systems uh, and they keep things running. Yaroslav, hi, the wisest teacher, Bob. How common is it, gonna put an it in there, for young people in Canada to work in the IT sphere? So, that's information technology. Take care. It's pretty common. We are a very technical country. Uh we often graduate probably three to five students a year that go into some kind of program. Um so, not a lot but I think percentage wise like I'm at a small school. I think that's pretty good. 
Um but yeah, I think those are the programs that um more people should go into because there's always jobs I think. So, so definitely we are a technical country. We have a you know a lot of computer systems in our businesses. So, a lot of people do go into that field. Uh let's see here. Bob, can you incentivize to work on a wet or can you encourage sharp computer? Um I'm not sure. When you incentivize someone, it's like you're trying to convince them to do something. When you encourage them, you're trying to use words to get them to do something. Um and I'm not sure about wet computer. I I don't know about that term. Although, there were computers when I was younger made by a company called Sharp. Um but anyways, Judith, um I'm gonna just move on. Hopefully, I made some kind of sense with my answer there. Well, from hi, Bob. Have you ever had a computer virus? I think everyone in the world has had a computer virus at some point or another. So, yes, I usually um have good antivirus but years ago, I remember one of my computers got a virus and uh it uh, I ended up erasing everything but I'll get to that word in a bit. Let's see here. Uh Orcolino just wanted to say thank you from Brazil. You've helped me a lot already. You're welcome. Um next question from Mikhail. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. Do you know any useful internet resources for learning programming languages? I don't because I haven't learned a new programming language lately. Um I do know that if you just do a good Google search like how to program in Python or how to program in PHP, hopefully you find some good resources but uh I have been out of the programming world for a long time. Uh let's see here. From Sir John. Hi, Bob. How are you? Who can play video games better in Canada? Kids or adults? So, I guess for professional gaming, by the time you are in your late twenties or in your thirties, you're considered old in the professional video game world. Most pro gamers are I think age, I'm gonna say age sixteen to twenty five. That's kind of where your reflexes are really fast for playing computer games. So, I would say definitely kids and young adults are way better. Um Oh, Javier. Javier. <laughs> I made a computer read my two names but how do you pronounce my name? Alvaro and Javier or Javier. Javier. Sorry, Javier. I don't know if I'm saying it right. And which one rolls off the tongue easier? Javier rolls off rolls off the tongue the easiest. Alvaro is I have to think about it to pronounce it. Um very beautiful names but we do not have those names uh, very often in Canada. Let's see here. Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. Do you fix your desktop hardware on your own when some components have glitches? Thank you. Yes. I have almost always fixed my own computers. There was a time in my life where I was a computer technician. So, I still remember most of that. Um but yes, I usually fix my own computers. If it's a really, really bad problem, I will ask my cousin who is a computer support expert. Uh, to give me some advice. Uh Ty says, hello, Mr. Bob. I have a question. What type of computer you're using? My computer type is HP. Have a great Friday. I am using a Dell computer um from Dell Canada. I usually order my computers from Dell. Although for school, I have an old um MacBook Air. It's about seven years old now. So, the school, the teachers have a computer like the school gives you a computer to use. Um I think I'm due for a new one at work though. Let's see here. Mode says, hi, Mr. Bob. You may be teaching these later in the lesson but just in case, could you please talk a little bit about rendering and latency in the realm of computers? I'm not gonna talk about those later but I'll talk about them now. Rendering is when you draw something on the computer maybe in 3D but in order to make it look realistic, it takes a long time for the computer to kind of um apply different images and graphics and um colors to whatever you're making and we call that rendering. A lot of times when you do animation, you'll do it with no color and then you'll tell the computer to render it overnight because it takes a long time for the computer to make everything look um almost realistic. And latency is 
um, like the time it takes for your computer to talk to another computer on the internet. When there's a problem with my live streams, it's usually because my latency is too high. I usually have relatively low latency. My computer can talk to YouTube really quickly but sometimes the latency gets really high and then the live stream gets uh, a few errors in it. Hopefully, that made some sense. Watt has the next question. Hi, is there any difference between restart and reboot? Thanks in advance. They are the same thing. So, you could say to someone, oh, your computer froze. Did you try rebooting it? Oh, your computer froze. Did you try restarting it? Both are equally good and both make sense. Let's do one more question and then we'll get back to the lesson. From Mickey. Hey, Bob. Hi, Mickey. Do you like to play online games on the computer? Is it common to see computer technicians in Canada or people there usually fix their computers by themselves? So, people at home usually bring their computer in or someone will come to their house to fix it. Both are very, very common. It's not common for people to fix their own computers. People get quite confused about that. Uh, and do I like to play online computer games? I used to. Um but I don't anymore. I've played um what have I played? I've played Counter-Strike. I've played World of Warcraft but I haven't played either of those games for a very long time. Let's get back to the lesson. Here we go. When there is something on the internet and you want to put it on your computer, we usually say that you will download it. When you buy a new game online, you have to download the game before you can play it. When you buy a piece of software, it used to come on a CD or DVD but now you will often download the software. If you bought Microsoft Office, you would go online and you would pay for the software and then you would download it. So, the software would come from the internet onto your computer. The other direction is called an upload. When I make a new video, I edit the video on my computer and then I upload the video to YouTube. So, the video or the um information on my computer goes from my computer to a place on the internet. So, again, download is when you get something from the internet and upload is when you put something on the internet. Different direction. So, let's talk a little bit about the mouse. Uh I thought this was kind of funny because I think everyone knows about this but then I thought some people just use their trackpad and I forgot to mention it. Usually with the mouse, you can either click once or sometimes you double click or click twice. So, it's very common for people to say things like this. Click on that icon. Click on that icon and drag it. So, when you click on something, you can then drag it on your computer screen. So, you might click something and drag it to the recycle bin or you might drag it to the trash can. So, if you wanted to get rid of it or delete it, you would click and then you would drag. If you though wanted to use something, you might need to double click on it. On certain computer systems, you need to double click on something and then it will run. On my computer, if I want to use a piece of software that's on my desktop, I will click twice really fast. I will double click. Sometimes you might even right click. Now, this depends on what kind of operating system you're using but when you right click on something on the desktop, sometimes a menu will pop up. So, you usually use the left mouse button to do things and the right mouse button usually brings up a small menu where you can make other choices and do things. You can do things like copy things. When you click copy, whatever you have clicked on or whatever you have highlighted, the computer remembers, okay? It basically memorizes it so that you can do something with it later which is called paste. Copy and paste is very, very handy. Very useful when you're learning a language. If you were to listen to a new English song, you could find the lyrics on the internet and you could highlight the lyrics. So, you click and drag over them then you right click and copy them and then you could paste them into a document and you could then work with it. Like you could translate some of the words and write the word in your language beside it but copy and paste is very, very handy. There's also something called cut. It works the same as copy but when you cut something, it doesn't just memorize it. It actually disappears from the screen and then you can still go and paste it later. So, basically, copy and paste 
makes two copies of something. Cut and paste takes something from one spot and puts it somewhere else. I think you knew this but maybe you didn't know the verbs. Uh and then I wanna mention as well that um when you copy something, it's control C or command C if you're on a Mac and paste is control V or command V if you're on a Mac. I think Eugene is putting that in the chat right now. Control C, control I think it's control V actually. I think control P might be an old way to print. Not sure but I use control C and control V or command C and command V. So, you know what Google is. Many of you use Google as your search engine but it's also a verb in English. You can Google something. You can say to someone, uh how do you change a tire on a vehicle? Uh and you could respond by saying, I don't know. Why don't you Google it? So, we don't say, why don't you go on Google and look it up? We literally say, why don't you Google it? Um what kind of squirrels live in Canada? I don't know. Why don't you Google it? I'm going to Google it and find out. So, we've <laughs> we often do this in English where when a new term is invented, we might immediately make a verb out of it. So, if you don't know a lot about computers, you can Google it. Uh you can go on Google and you can type it in and click Google search and it will find the answer. You can Google it. I think Google is expecting it to be Christmas soon. I didn't realize this when I got the image yesterday but there are Christmas lights on the word Google. So, when you are looking at anything on a computer, you can scroll down and you can scroll back up. So, often in class, I might say to a student, um well, let me see the project you're working on and I'll read what's on the screen and then I'll say, okay, scroll down a bit so I can read the rest. So, that basically means to move down in a document or move down on a web page. Often, you will use the wheel on the mouse to scroll down, okay? When you move the wheel, it will move the screen down and then of course, we also have scroll up. So, I might say to a student, scroll up to the beginning of your paper so I can read your first paragraph or scroll down to the end of your paper or scroll down to the bottom of this web page so we can read what's there. So, scroll up, sorry, scroll down takes you to the bottom and then scroll up takes you back to the top. You might still want to print. This doesn't happen very often anymore. In schools, often everything is digital. We use something called Google Classroom. So, I give students assignments on the computer and they finish them on the computer and return them on the computer but sometimes people still want to print things. Um you realized from watching my other channel that I still print one piece of paper every day. I click file print uh on my computer or I click the little print icon and it will create whatever's on my screen. It will put it on a piece of paper. So, we still print and we use it as a verb. I need to print something. I need to print something for class today. I need to print something for my meeting later today. So, um we were supposed to use less paper by now in the world but I think we're still using quite a bit of it. Hey, this is an older verb that we don't use very much anymore and there's another one that's even older. Um sometimes people will browse the internet. Um I haven't heard this word for a long time. A lot of times people will just say I was on the internet the other day and I read something or uh later today I have a bit of time. I'm just gonna go on the internet and do some research but we used to say browse. People would browse the internet and that's why we call them web browsers. So, you use a browser to browse the internet. A long time ago, people used to surf the internet. I have not heard that word used to talk about the internet for a very long time but people used to surf the web. I was surfing the web. So, haven't heard that for probably 10 or more years. Maybe 20 years. Uh browse, you'll still hear once in a while. Um when you don't want something anymore, you delete it. Um you can either put it in the trash can or the recycle bin. When you don't want something, as I said earlier, you can click on it, a single click and then drag it and then when you let go, it goes in the del- the, the the recycle bin. Um and uh I don't delete things permanently when I delete them on my computer. I usually put them in the recycle bin. Uh and then every month or so, I look at what's in there before I empty it and delete things permanently. Hey, let's move to give me one moment here. 
Let's move to members only chat mode. Give me a second to make that switch and let me talk a little bit about members. First of all, thank you so much for being members. All of you who are members. It is quite helpful to have members who support me. It's a lot of fun for me to see a lot of green names in the chat. It's very encouraging to know that people are here that they're excited about learning English and uh, ready to uh, talk to each other. And I know a lot of you have gotten to know each other quite well. So, thank you so much for all of you uh, who are members of this channel. If you're wondering what it's all about, there is a join button that you can click to find out more. Let me get the next question on the screen though and then I will start answering questions from the chat from members as well. Leonardo, hi Bob. Good morning. I hope you are having a great week. By any chance, do you know which is the programming language most utilized in companies in Canada? If you were going to learn a language today, um I think I would highly recommend that you learn Python. I think that I'm not sure if it's the most used language but it is certainly I think one of the most versatile languages. So, if you were going to learn a language, I would learn Python. Definitely Uh, a good choice I think. Let's see here. Next question from Layla. Salam teacher. Bob, wish you are doing well. Do you we say I turn off my computer or is there some other expression? We turn it off. Yep. When I'm done using my computer, I turn off my computer or I turn it off. We can always, you know, flip to the inside. Um so, yes, um at the end of the day at school, um it's important that I turn off my computer because I don't want my computer to be on at all night. There's no reason for that to happen. Let's see here. Bobby, when did you buy your first computer? I bought my first computer. So, my parents bought me a computer when I was about I would say 10 or 11. I can't remember exactly. Um and then within a year, my parents bought me another computer. So, my parents and it was for the whole family. It wasn't just for me. My parents bought a family computer when I was 10 or 11 and then when I was 12 or 13, we bought our second computer and my older brother and I loved it. We we just learned all kinds of things about the computer. It was great. Oh, Philosopho Mickey, Counter-Strike, huh? Wonder if you had got people lots of headshots at that time you used to play it. Well, depends on the map. Um I wasn't really that good at it but I certainly had my fair share of uh high scores or being the top player. Maria C. Hi, Bob. How are you doing today? Let me get this off the screen. I'm looking at the chat now by the way. Uh do you prefer laptops or personal computers? I have a laptop but I think I prefer the other type. I find them more reliable. Not sure why. So, for editing, um I need a very powerful computer because when you um export the video files, whenever you edit something, if the computer is slow, it takes too long. So, I like having a desktop because you can get more power for less money or more power for the same amount of money. So, I do have a laptop which I use for live streaming outside and inside and I do take with me if I visit someone for a couple days and I want to work but generally, I prefer having a desktop computer. Pretty Wolf. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? Well, yes. What do you think of AI regarding the rapid evolution of this technology? It's going in the right direction or can it present a risk in the future thanks to you? So, AI stands for artificial intelligence. The ability for computers to start thinking and doing some um human-like thinking. Um I'm a little worried about it for a couple of reasons. One is they have AI now that can write essays for students. So, I'm worried that in the future, students won't do their own work. I'm not worried about AI taking over the world. Although, you know, maybe in a hundred years or something but I'm not sure. Modags, we'll continue our chat after this. I don't wanna give Mr. Bob a hard time reading my verbose sentence to Dave. Thanks, Mode. And Key Park, Bob is professional at computer. I would say this. I computers have always been a hobby of mine. There was a time in my life for about 20 years where I did computer support work. I was a computer support technician uh part time while I was also teaching. So, I would say that I have some experience in the area for sure. Uh let's see here. Freddie Wolf. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? Well, what do you think of AI? Oh, this question seems like a repeat but I noticed the questions weren't coming in very fast. So, maybe Freddie Wolf is actually an AI 
and we can now now we know because he uh the AI put the same question in twice. Maybe maybe Freddie Wolf is actually a computer. Stacy says, when did you first use the internet? So, in the early 90s, I was working part time at my university job um and someone said, hey, come have a look at this and they showed me a computer and they said, this is the internet and they showed me a web page. It was it was very cool. Um so, early 90s, I would say. Modags, Mr. Bob, before doing anything else, don't forget to always press control S. Yes, control S is save. Very handy thing to press. Although, when you use things like Google Docs, it saves automatically. I really like that part of Google Docs. Audie says, hi, teacher Bob. Why my screen? It's to change the cursor narrow to scratch. It's very hard for me to see where am I am. Thanks. There is a way to change the size of your cursor or your screen um or the arrow, your mouse pointer. I think if you look around, you'll be able to find that in these settings. Mickey says, Bob, do you know what the scroll lock button is used for? I'm under the impression that this button is the most useless button on our keyboards. I don't know what it's for. Scroll lock. I wonder if in ancient times at the beginning of the computer um era, whether there was a reason for that. I'll have to look that up later today. Wanda says, hi, teacher Bob. How are you? What do you think about tablets? I like tablets. I didn't find so I had an iPad at work for a while. About ten years ago or eight years ago, the teachers received an iPad to use in the classroom. I didn't find it as useful as a laptop. For me as a teacher, having a laptop and a projector or a laptop and a really big television to connect to, that is the most useful tool for me as a teacher. Um not a tablet. Freddie Wolf, hi, Bob. No, no, I am human for sure. That's exactly what an AI would say though, Freddie Wolf. No, I know you're human, Freddie. Uh, Mode eggs. Freddie Lordy. Uh, yes, there we go. Freddie the computer. Uh, let me get another question from oops, I'm on the wrong question form. There we go. Let me get another question from here. Rosemary, hi, Bob. How often do you perform a backup? Do you think it is important? So, when you back up your computer, it means you save your files somewhere else. So, I automatically have a backup created on an external hard drive and I also back up to the internet. So, I have two backups. Uh, I think it's very important especially if the files you are creating are important for work um or even family photos like things you don't want to lose your files. Uh, little caddy, did you learn to use a computer in high school? Yes. Way back in the 80s, the late 80s, we had Commodore 64s at my high school and I took a computer class when I was in grade 11 and uh, we learned to program in a language called basic. So, yes, that way back in the late 80s, there were computers. Uh let's see here. Arjun, did you remember the name of any of your subscribers? I recognize a lot of the subscriber names, especially people who leave comments on my second channel. Those are probably the subscribers I recognize the most easily uh because I respond to more comments on that channel usually. Um let's see here. Geo, hi, teacher Bob. I'm a software developer and my questions, what do you think about the artificial intelligence? Will AI destroy humanity? I think AI is cool. I am a little worried about it being used for bad things like cheating in school but I don't know if it will destroy humanity. We'll have to wait and see. Uh let's see here. Uh Freddie Wolf says, hi, Bob. Could you tell us what antivirus you use? (laughs) No, that's too I don't wanna give away too much information. Um I use seven different uh antivirus packages all running at the same time, Freddie. Rod says, I'm a geek crazy about technology. It's just so handy. Hey, Rod. Um I don't know what life would be like for me without computers. In fact, I was a teacher. The whole time I've been teaching, I've been able to use a computer to help me teach and I think if I was a teacher in the 70s or 60s, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much. Um let's see here. Lolly Lolly. Is it financially interesting to work on the internet as a teacher? I hope my question is not intrusive. Yes, it is like I do enjoy 
doing YouTube, I do enjoy getting some revenue from the ads. So, I do get paid a little bit from YouTube. Um it's it's cool. I've not explored though like teaching via Zoom or FaceTime. Like I've never done online classes. I know like Rod, the English teacher does online classes. Um I might explore that someday as a job to make money but uh, for now, I'm just happy with um getting a little bit of money from ads and getting um a little bit of money from members. So, that's enough for me. Marwanto says, hi. Hi, Marwanto. Mickey says, once I was having an online class and a student told our teacher to press alt F4 to help his internet connection and the result was kind of funny. Don't press that if you're on a Windows PC right now because that will close everything and then you'll have to open it again. It's it's an old joke that people used to do uh in computer games. Modag says to Lolly Lolly, are you planning to be an online French teacher? Oh, interesting. I think teaching online, the people I know who do it, um it's a little different than teaching in person and it's a bit of an acquired taste we would say in English. When something's an acquired taste, it's um just because you like teaching in a classroom doesn't mean you'll like teaching online. Uh just because you like um making really yummy food doesn't mean you would enjoy being a chef at a restaurant. It can be an acquired taste. You might have to try it to find out if you like it. Let's finish off this lesson everybody. Sometimes when you put something in the recycle bin uh and you did it by accident, you might want to restore that file. Not sure if you can see this but you can open your recycle bin or open your trash can on a computer and you can restore a file. So, that takes it back out of the recycle bin. Sometimes you put things in there by accident. And then Mode Eggs was talking about this. You should always save your work. Um when you are typing a document, if you're using a piece of software, you should save it. If you're working on editing a photo, you should save it. You should hit control S uh or you should hit file save as often as possible uh so that you uh don't lose your work. You don't wanna lose your work. Um this to me is one of the most powerful things in the computer world and it's called undo. So, if you hit the undo button which looks like an arrow or if you hit control Z or command Z on a Mac, it undoes what you just did. So, if you delete something in a document, you can hit undo. If you are editing a video and you accidentally delete part of it, you can hit undo, control Z uh, or you can click the undo button. Undo has really saved me a number of times from disaster where I've made a mistake editing a video and then I can just hit undo and it fix and it puts it back to where it was before. You also have redo uh when you undo something and if you're like, no, no, I did actually wanna do that, you can redo it. So, that's kinda handy as well. So, we're gonna talk a little bit about upgrade and update. Sometimes you need to upgrade something on your computer and sometimes you need to update something on your computer and these words look very similar but here's how I would distinguish between the two. Let's say you're using Windows 10. You might want to upgrade and start using Windows 11. Let's say you have an old computer and you wanna get a better one. You might want to upgrade to a better computer. So, for me, upgrade is a major change in a piece of software or a major change in what you own. To me, an update is something that's a little more minor. If you do your Windows updates, it means your window, your computer puts little, makes little changes to make your system better. Um if you want to update your graphics card, it might mean you put a new graphics card in. So, for me, I would use the word upgrade for major changes and I would use the word update for small changes. That being said, you'll probably hear these two words mixed up once in a while. People will say, oh, I really need to update my computer and that might mean they want to buy a new one but I would use the word upgrade. So, for you, I would say this because I've worked with computers. I would use upgrade to talk about major changes and update to talk about minor changes. Hopefully, that makes sense. Maybe Dave and Todd can give their opinion on that in the chat. Uh let's see here. 
When you get software, I've used this word a couple times already. When you get software, sometimes you download the software and then you need to install the software. When you install software, it takes it from whatever version you got from the internet and it makes it usable on your computer. It's similar to when you need windows in your house. The truck delivers the windows and sets them by a tree. That's like getting it downloaded but you still need to install the window in your house. So, the same thing happens with software. When you download a file, you have the file but it's not really usable yet. Somebody still, you still have to double click and install it. So, kind of picture it that way. Um downloading is like a truck delivering windows to your house and then you still have to install them. Hack. So, when you hack a computer, it means you break into it. You bypass the security. When you hack a computer, it means you use someone else's computer uh without their permission and it's uh basically breaking the law. So, someone who hacks computers is called a hacker. Um sometimes people hack computers because they want to get information from someone or they want to install some malware. Not very nice when someone hacks your computer. And someone asked a question earlier about backup. So, first of all, I wanna mention this. When you back up your computer, it's usually two words but the resulting thing that you create is called a backup which is one word, okay? But you'll see this kind of used in a bunch of different ways. Sometimes people say, I have to back up my computer and they make it one word but technically, the verb backup is two words. I need to back up my computer and then I need to create a backup. When it's the noun, it becomes one word. So, what is a backup? You get an external hard drive and you put all the files from your computer on that other hard drive or you put all the files from your computer onto the internet somewhere and you create a cloud backup. So, a couple different kinds of ways to backup. Sometimes, your computer just doesn't work and it crashes all the time. It freezes all the time. You don't know what's wrong with it. So, you decide you're going to wipe your computer. When you wipe a computer, it means that you delete everything on it and you restore it to what it was like the day you bought it, okay? So, often at work, after six years of using my laptop, I'm allowed to take it home but before I take it home, the school will wipe the laptop. So, they'll delete everything that's on it. They'll make the laptop um basically exactly how it was when it first came out of the box with nothing on it except for the operating system. So, when you wipe a computer, it means you delete everything. You'll sometimes see this on TV or in the movies when criminals have uh information on a computer they don't want the police to have. They'll quickly wipe the computer um when the police are coming. They'll wipe all of the data so that there's nothing on the computer for the police to see. Hey, let me answer some questions um and round out this lesson on computers. By the way, I do wanna say hi to the 391 people watching. Uh if you are new here, don't forget to click this red subscribe button uh and subscribe to the channel. It's free and you get uh a little notification whenever I put a new video out. Okay, let me see what I got here. I'm gonna finish off these questions. Um let's see here. Rachel, hi teacher. I hope you have a nice day. Do you think computer can do well without internet? So, I lived in a time where there was no internet and I enjoyed using my computer and I've lived in a time where there is internet and I would say being connected to the internet is better. (laughs) It's way better than not having internet. A couple of weeks ago, the internet stopped working here for about four hours and for myself and for my children, it was very, very annoying. Um even though I'm not on the computer all the time, I wanted to find a recipe to make something for supper but the internet didn't work. Uh, I wanted to check my work email but the internet didn't work. So, it was very frustrating. So, I would say computers work great without the internet and they can be quite enjoyable but certainly being connected is very, very cool and fun. Uh let's see here. Katarina, hello, dear teacher Bob. Do you prefer computers or laptops for work? I prefer a laptop for work and a desktop for at home. In fact, my 
you can kind of see in the dark here. That's my desktop computer. Um but for work definitely a laptop because I don't like I need to go to meetings. I need to go to my classroom. I might need to go to the library and meet a student. Um it's just way way handier to have a laptop at work. Let's see here. Raphael. Hi, Bob. This is Raphael from the Dominican Republic. I enjoy your English videos. Is everything computerized in Canada? I wouldn't say everything but like I pay with my bank card when I buy groceries. Um my vaccine passport is on my phone. Um I would say the like I do my banking on like I think almost everything in Canada is computerized to some degree. Yes. Uh let's see here. From David. Good afternoon, teacher. What is the right way to tell someone you work in IT? Is it okay just to say I work in IT or you need to be specific? You would say you work in IT. Yeah. Um you would say oh yeah, I work in IT. Um you could say something like I'm a computer programmer or you could say I'm a computer support technician. You could say I work in IT. You could say um you know, I'm a network administrator. You can use the specifics if you want but if you say to someone in Canada, I work in IT. They will know that you work with computers somehow. Let's see here. Uh from Ario. Yay, my request granted. Thanks. I use Google to watch movie series. Did you use websites to watch series or movies? I use Netflix and um I have Apple TV now. I have a three month free trial because I'm cheap. <laughs> so, uh I don't use Google to find things to watch but I do watch a lot of things on YouTube. Um especially music videos I would say. Adriana says, hi, Bob. Best teacher ever. Do you also call multifunctional devices that you use to print, scan, and reproduce documents? Yes. We actually still usually call it a printer but we'll call it a multifunction printer uh or a multi yeah, we would say a multifunction printer and that usually means you can print, you can scan, you can photocopy, you can fax with it. Usually, a multifunction printer will do all those things. Patana, hi, Bob. What's the difference between erase and delete? Thank you. So, we use delete when talking about deleting files. We use erase when we get rid of something in a document or on a photo. So, if you had a picture of my face, you could erase my wrinkles, right? Um or if you um had a file of a picture of me, you could delete the file. So, slight difference. Both have like a similar meaning but We use erase when we're talking about what we're doing in software and delete to delete the file. So, Azam says, hi, Bob. How are you? What was your first PC? Do you remember Commodore? So, my first computer was a Commodore VIC-20. My second computer was a Commodore 64. Uh, I loved both of them. In fact, I still sometimes play Commodore 64 games using an emulator um on my PC. Uh let's see. Nikita says, greetings teacher Bob. Last week, I was in Japan and returned to Russia. Now, I come to Ukraine. I travel everywhere with your useful lessons. Thanks Nikita for watching my lessons no matter where you are in the world. That's awesome. Stacy says, have you ever been hacked your computer or your account or social networking services? No, I have not. So, cross my fingers that does not ever happen. Hey, that's it. We are done. Once again, a little bit early but I don't know if you've noticed the lessons are a little bit shorter lately. Um but that's okay with me. I've been going one hour. I've been trying to make the lessons about 50 minutes long. 50, 55 minutes because usually I do need to run out the door. I do need to get to work. So, uh, hopefully, you don't mind um but I think things have been going well. Hey, thanks to the 416 people watching. Thanks to all of you for learning a little bit more about (laughs) am I ever gonna learn which way to point? Um thank you for learning a little bit more about computers. Uh a couple of things. There will be a live stream tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This lesson will come out in a couple of days in a shorter version with no user questions. So, it's a great thing to listen to uh for a second time uh just to train your ears a little bit just to get you just to reinforce what you've learned today and specifically, there might be things you didn't quite understand but if you listen to it again, it might actually help you a lot. So, look for that second lesson. 
Uh, I always say, uh, listen to it on the subway. Listen to it while you cook dinner uh, or just sit down and watch it if you like the visual element of it. But anyways, uh, that will come out in a couple days. Look for that. Thanks to Todd and Dave uh, once again for moderating the chat and I do want to say bye to Gaurav and Maria C. Adi the Thai, Norma, Erop, Eugene, Anuat. I know Rod the English teacher is in here somewhere. Key Park, Lolly Lolly, Mode Eggs, Dulio, uh, Freddie Wolf, Wanda, Dulio. I think I used your comment on today's short English lesson. I don't know if you're the same Dulio. I think you are. Uh, let me scroll back. Mode Eggs, I've said twice now. Oh, Philosopho Mickey. Uh, good to see you here. Bye to all of you. Thank you once again for hanging out and learning just a little bit of English. Have a great day. Uh, I'm going to jump in my van and go to work and uh, have a nice Friday and then enjoy the weekend. But anyways, bye.